As you know, I'm Bisu, Brenda Sue Lansdowne from BisuBoutiques.com, where we have good stuff and where we also use Blazer brand torches to make heat patina on our raw brass stampings. I've been using Blazer torches for a long time and I was really thrilled to receive these torches as a gift from the Blazer company and I love them. The one, the Spitfire, I think this is a Spitfire, this is one, I actually have one already, and I love it. I'm glad for backup, because once in a while somebody maybe wants to come and make heat patina with me. Also, I wanted to mention, too, if you're going to make heat patina with a torch, I hope you're using a blazer, because they're the best. The company has been around for a long time. And you want to use the blazer butane, because it's 99.99% .99 pure. I've been reading lately about the different fuels, and if you've seen some of my older videos about doing heat patina, I use a real generic can of stuff, and I've read since then that really that wasn't the best choice. You really want to use a very, very pure grade fuel. So important. So you can't go wrong if you use Blazer on the Blazer products. So in this video, I'm going to show you some neat tricks that I haven't really shown before. Um, we're going to do some of the basics. If you've never used a, a torch before, don't worry about it. I know some people kind of freak out about using different things for the first time. If you can turn on a lighter, you can use these products. That's how simple they are. In fact, some people call them, instead of micro torches, they call them creme brulee torches. They use them, you know, the waiter comes in the restaurant and lights up your dessert, that kind of thing. You know, so they're very, very straightforward. There's just basic safety with them, and you're good to go. And you can solder with them. I don't. I love just making patina. I'm the color girl. So there's just a, so many ways that you can use these products with our brass besides soldering. So come on over here, and let me show you how to fill a blazer butane torch and how to go ahead and use it to make some incredible color like I have on my lovely bracelet, which I'll show you up I'll show you up close in just a minute. Come on over. Okay, so here's a close-up of my beautiful bracelet that I made with fire patina using the torches from Blazer. I don't know if you can see that really good. Let me set it back down here. Maybe Javi can zoom up a little bit. This came out so great. And it was so simple. It's just a brass stamping. This is how it started out. <laughs> Try to position it so you can see it. This one, it's the Peacocks from our website. This has a little patina on it. I'm going to do some more and show you how I got it to look like that. We started out this way. It came out so pretty. But first, I did say I was going to show you how to fill this torch. You may have seen my other videos about it. Um, a really good place to go and get all the scoop on how to fill your torch is at blazerproducts.com. There's a really, really good video right on the front page that you can click on that says fill your torch. And they've just said it all. In my other video, I filled my torch by setting it on its side and then putting the fuel into it. But they really admonish that, first of all, of course, safety first, you want to turn it off. Okay, so make sure that it's off. And I'm not actually going to put any in this because it's full, and you don't want to overfill a torch. But using the Blazer Fuel, and there was a really cool thing I saw on their video. Oh, I hope I don't jingle too much in this video. Um, it has these cool little nozzles in the cap and this is to serve as an adapter for different types of other torches you might have if you don't have a blazer yet I hope you will get one um, but I'm never gonna have to use them because I use a blazer torch yay yay me anyway to fill this make sure it's off and then you'll see this little orifice right here 
on the bottom. And then you want to take your blazer fuel and you will insert it into that orifice and press down firmly. Don't pump it. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds, they say, to fill it from empty. So if you're partway full, fuel, full <laughs> with your fuel, you're not going to need to be doing this too long. Okay? But another thing, too, is if you would see a little bit of fuel coming back up out, ooh, it, it's full. And if you get too much in here and light her up, Mr. Rob Perry can tell you what happens because he liked to do that and then you have like flamethrower thing going on. You don't want that. It's not safe. Don't do what Rob did. Don't overfill it. <laughs> um, so that's how you would fill it. Very simple. That way. I'll turn this back on so I can use it. This is the bigger torch. The, uh, the one that they sent me is a brand new. It's white. It's called Big Buddy. There's a black one too. This one I think is a little bit different model number and you see it's got like this stand on it. So to fill this one, the big buddy's the same. This comes off the stand and here's your orifice for filling. And you do it the same way. Okay? Now what's the difference between these two before we get started with the bracelet thing? Well, this one creates a bigger brushier flame and this one is a smaller flame. Now for a lot of control I like this littler one. It's the ES-1000. I think they call it the Spitfire. For the bigger one, I like this one. And the Big Buddy would be pretty much the same as this if you look for a Big Buddy. We don't sell these yet, but might one of these days before too long. I use them all the time. And to get this look, I am going to use the smaller one. Now you can see with my setup I have safety first. I have water here ready for quenching. I have this cookie pan on the back here because it will throw some cinders, some ash. Okay, don't get too scared about that. The cookie pan, it'll deflect up, that'll be fine. I've got a piece of marble under here, my cinder block, my soldering block. Okay, so I'm good to go. Now, one thing I want to do for sure is I don't want to have this blazer fuel sitting right there like I did. So let me get the cap back on. Okay, that was clumsy. And let me put that away. Far away. Nothing, you know, that could blow up <laughs> you were close. And you want to keep your other torches far away. So I'm sending that one over there for now. I'm going to keep it right by. Okay, so here are my peacocks. I'm going to heat these up to red, which means they're going to be super hot. When you do them lightweight, they just get this pretty rainbow patina. I'm going to heat this up to red. Now, to do it fast, maybe the bigger one would be better, but this is what I'm going to do this time. So what I do is you flip this part, this little lever up, press down, I've got flame, and then I'm going to put it on lock so I don't have to hold it on the whole time. And I'm going to heat this up good and hot, and I'm going to get it red, glowing red. And then you'll be surprised to see what color this has turned when we're done. We're getting there. This little blazer is a, it's a workhorse. Let me tell you, you would be amazed at all the things that you can do with this little tiny torch. Okay, we're starting to get there because it's starting to turn all black. When you get this glowing red. The next piece I'll do, I'll use the bigger torch and show you the difference. Okay, see it's starting to go red right there. Probably if it was a smaller piece, we would. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just shut this off. This might be good. I always say sometimes mistakes are a good thing. That wasn't a mistake, but just to show you the diff, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I click this down, and I click my big red button in. I'm going to go ahead and hold it because we're almost there. See it glowing red? 
There's a side button where you can click it to keep it continuous too, but I don't need to because I only need a minute. Okay, we're done. You can see the difference. Maybe if I'd done that from the beginning, I would have got done quicker. I just like my little one. It gives me more control. But you can see, excuse me, I'm going to have to go in front of you. This is black. Be careful touching that because it be hot. This is black. Don't touch that. Don't touch right here. Hot, hot, hot. So that's why I'm going to pick this up with a pair of um, pliers and quench it Boom, down the water. This will remain quite warm for a while, but this one, this is as cool as can be. Now I'm going to get a piece of tissue, to paper towel and dry this off. pretty black with a little bit of coppery showing through. Why is that coppery showing through? Remember, brass is mostly copper. Our brass is 85% copper. So you're going to have that. Okay, so now to achieve that lovely patina that I had, I've got my extra fine steel wool and I'm going to start buffing it back. Buff, 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 buff. Another thing you could do, instead of going all the way to black, if you like, you could just take this part way, and then you could hit it with some swelligant darkening patina, and a little heat, and then buff it back, and you'll get pretty much the same thing. This almost reminds me of a rusty black when you do this, when you take your brass to black with your blazer torch. Okay, now I've got my steel wool mess. Let me get rid of that. Don't want that because that actually, you know, could maybe be a little bit of a fire hazard having that debris around. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so here now we've got our beautifully buffed out piece. Isn't that gorgeous? Well, let's see how close is that. To, I might have to work on that a little bit. It's very close to this. This one I think looks a little bit browner because I did use darkening patina on this one that I've already made into a bracelet, but that's close. So it's, you know, a lot of fun playing around. An awful lot of fun playing around just to see all the different colors and effects that you can get to change up your brass so that you can use it in different ways. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some more tricks. Let me put this aside. I'm going to show you how I can make a little pair. Oh, that is still warm. Oops, I just did what I said I wouldn't. A little pair of texturized earrings. And so that they'll go fast. And also, I think perhaps I might get a more even patina on both because two different pieces of brass may go two different ways. And because they're earrings, we kind of sort of want them to match. So I'm going to grab my big torch again. And then I'm going to. Sometimes with this one, I have a little trouble getting it to shut off real quick. Okay, I think that's all I want for now. Okay, that shut it off, the sideways thing shut off. But you'll see, this one got a lot blacker than that one, so I'm going to have to do a little bit more. Let me just take this one out of the equation here. Move it up there. Never touch the brass. Give this one a little bit more. Because that one kind of went black. Okay, they're pretty similar now. Alright, so now what am I going to do? Well, let me first quench them. Well, no, I don't want to quench them, and here's why. Because when the brass is really, really warm, it's a great way to get texture on it. But you got to be careful because it's hot. So might be a little truck for me to get that on there. Okay. Got it on. I have, this is a texturizing hammer. I don't have these for sale yet, but maybe I'll make some kind of a kit. Okay, I'm going to put it on my steel bench block. And I'm just going to put a little texture on it. Sometimes you can hold it down a little bit if you want. 
don't want to pound out to the edges too much because it'll tend to start misshaping the round circle a little bit, okay? So now that that is done, sometimes the act of pounding it cools it down, but just because we don't know for sure, I'm putting it in the water. Piece of paper towel. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. I had previously drilled these out in two places. Oh, I remember this is warm. Brenda, don't forget. Okay, put her in here. And now, just start camping her. Kind of look at the other one and see. Oops, I flipped over. It's probably not real hot. No, no it's not. I don't know why that is. You scientists out there could tell me. When you start beating on brass, it cools down. And I'm kind of looking to see, is it going to match up with this? You know, like, I don't want to have more texture on this than I do on the other one. Because they're going to be earrings, right? Now, just to be sure, I'm going to dunk it. Dry it. Okay. Then, put this aside. And once again, I need to get my steel wool. And this is where we're going to show, when we buff this back, it will also shine and kind of polish the piece for you when you do this with the steel wool. And then it's going to bring up the texture that you just applied with your hammer. So now you have a little bit more of a brownish brass. Probably be better not to, if you have a painted surface on your workbench, probably best not to be still holding on it. Probably should have done it on the non-stick surface. But, oh well. For the sake of the video, we'll sacrifice a little white paint if we have to. Yeah, I wish I'd put a little bit more texture right there, but they're alright. They're okay. They'll make pretty earrings. So wipe those off. And I'll get the debris out of here. Those little things we don't want them to catch and spark. Get them out. And now, can you? I'm gonna put this on the white surface. And can you zero in on that, Abby, and and show them how pretty that is? Maybe I'll bring it up first. How's that? Does that work? See? Now, so now all I have to do is figure out: Do I want to make a handmade ear wire? I think a handmade ear wire would be really cool, especially um, with our artistic wire. Um, jig that we have on the site that's a really cool ear wire and then find the right things to hang from the bottom and those will be a handsome pair of earrings don't you think I think so in fact they will probably become mine after this video is done so let me move them to the side one more thing I'd like to show you is this is something I'll just move it closer. this is something that I did with the texture and the hammer using this blank. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to torch this part way out, but I'm going to only do it so part way so I can show you with the darkening patina what happens. I hope I'm speaking loud enough. Sometimes in the afternoon my voice wears out a little bit. <laughs> okay, so well, I will usually use the Spitfire, the little one, that's this for control but for sake of time and because it'll go faster with the bigger one and this is a larger piece I'm going to light it up with this and you can see there were some little cinders coming off of there so that's why I have that cookie pan back there in fact a lot of times underneath this I work off a cookie pan underneath all of this and the reason I didn't do it for this video is because, okay, that's all I want, so. The reason I didn't do it for this video is because it was creating too much glare. I learned a few videos back, don't work off of a cookie sheet because nobody can see anything. So, that's why. But normally there's one underneath there. Okay, I've got this wor warmed up pretty well. And it's kind of a toasty color. Can you see that? Okay, so now I'm going to bring my bench block back over. And while it's hot, because the metal is softer then, I am going to put some texture in. Now, you know, this won't be perfect. 
because I'm just doing it fast. And I'm sorry for the annoying noise, but I need to show you. Turn around here, you. All right. So I just put those little things in there. And now I'm going to use the other side just to put a little bit of variation to it. And you will see this piece is starting to bend out the other way. That's okay. Don't worry about that. that you can fix that very easily. Okay. All right. Enough said for that. Just in case it might still be hot, I'm going to take it and throw it in the water. Move this back out of the way. I'll get it out. I don't need that. Out of the water. Okay. I just need to dry it off. And then I'll show you how I bend it back. Okay, so it's still, it's not, you know, that real black color that we had. This is a toasty brown. I want to bend it back, just, just put it back like that. I have all the stuff at bisuboutiques.com. You would find this under necklace blanks. Necklace blanks. We sell tons of these. Because they're really great for assemblage. But now you're seeing, it might be great for a really cool centerpiece on their own. You know, hang some fiber from here. Let's get that out of the way. From fiber or some chains or just something simple and a chain around. That's what my, I might do that. I think it would be really cool. But to finish this off, okay, this is probably still warm. And that's okay because of what we're going to do next. This is my Swelligant Darkening Patina. Looks like this. Is it in the frame there, Javi? Okay. I poured a little bit in the cup because, as I've told you before, we never work straight out of the bottle because it could corrupt it and we don't want to corrupt the solution. Now on this dark and because this block is still warm. Now you might not want to do this. I I don't mind, but you may not want to get this on your on your uh, soldering block. But I kind of like to do it this way because the soldering block is still warm. <laughs> And I'm not going to have to heat this up again, isn't that something? Because this is still warm. It went ahead. That's the thing about darkening solution. It will turn really fast if you have any heat source whatsoever. Okay, look at that. That's perfectly black. So now, because that's been on there, it's going to be hot. Now what do I do to stop that action? Very simple. You know with the swelling and products, all we do is like we do something we've heated with a blazer torch. We Ding it into the water. Okay. And now I'll lift that out. And I'll dry it off. Okay, it's quite black, isn't it? Quite black. But it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when we start buffing this. And remember, when you use the steel wool, it kind of polishes it, too. Let me get my hands out of it. And you know, when you guys are doing this in your own home studio, it might be really good to be doing your buffing stuff away from where you're soldering or using your torch because I'm thinking, you know, with this debris and stuff, you know, it just might be a good thing to just get that out of there. But I'm doing it this way for the sake of the video and time. It might be better to have that nut right there. Okay. So I've removed quite a bit of it. I might actually want to do it again a little bit. But that will. Because I have plenty in my cup. And if I have to, I can just hit that with my torch. But it's probably going to go ahead and turn. Now see, it's not turning quite as dark because the, the uh, soldering block is cooling down. But, if I take and get rid of this stuff, and I hit that with my little torch, I use my little torch on this one. I'll darken back up. Pretty good. Okay, 
So see, you have more control with the little one. All right, now that's hot. So we need to handle with care and quench it all the way, every corner. Take it out. Let's see what we have now. It might be I, I needed maybe a little bit more uh, texture on this side. Oh, there's some there. Oh no, that's there. That's why the antiquing is so good because you can see what all you got. But if I didn't have enough texture there, or like there's a little space there where it didn't hit too good, and there's a little space there, I can always take it back, heat it up again, and bang on it again. So all is not lost. You just might need to do some of the steps again. Okay. So I would probably work on this a little bit more, but for the sake of time in the video, I'll let this be the end of this one. As you can see, it's a kind of a toasty brown in the back, and then the front, and then, you know, you just bend it back into shape as you like it. And that's how that goes. So I had a few more pieces I wanted to share, but I think, honestly, that uh, I, I, I've showed you a good many things that you can do today. But I mostly wanted to feature these blazer torches because they're an awesome product. I've had this one for hmm, seven, eight years. And they say at their website that it's nothing to hear that people would have one for 15 years. So, I mean, they're very durable. So, if you're looking to get a torch, first of all, do not be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Get an old cookie sheet, get yourself a cinder block, soldering block. Just use common safety. Keep things that are flammable away from it. You know, you can get this up in the back, cookie sheet to catch your cinders. Maybe one underneath, too, is not a bad idea. Might be a really good idea. And get yourself a blazer torch and some blazer fuel and go to town and have fun because that's what it's about that's what it's all about at beastsofboutiques.com where we have every kind of brass stamping you can imagine lots of mixed media product so many good things to play with so come over and see us one day soon you have a great day